Good morning all. I hope you are well and I hope you had a great weekend. I hope you are refreshed and ready for the week ahead. So before I start, I'd like to say a big thank you to TradingView for featuring the video that I made on Friday. I appreciate that and I appreciate... <clears throat> I appreciate all of the followers that have come as a result of that feature. So thank you very much for that. And I hope that I can endeavor to continue to bring one or two of you with a ton of value. So three pairs of watch today. There is an entry or there was an entry on EuroCAD that I could have taken on Friday. Uh, I decided to stay out of that and I shall tell you why as we break, as I Draw down to the lower time frames. But without without further ado, let's break these pairs down for you now. So Eurocad, looking for another possible entry on this today, and that is my favourite of the bunch. So I'm going to break that down first. So why am I looking at Eurocad? For those of you that watch my videos regularly, you will know why I'm looking at this on the higher time frames. For those of you that are new, you potentially will not. So I'm going to tell you about that now. So on the higher time frames, the narrative, the picture as I see it, is that we push down to this area here. Okay, so we have this we have this sharp move down, sharp move up. When we see sharp moves down, followed by sharp moves up, that implies that there is a lot of liquidity in this area, uh, which potentially could send price to the upside with a similar level of aggression as it moved up last time around. So what happens? We tap into this area, we push up with a similar level of aggression. So that's a tick in the box. Typically, as I've said before, on the higher time frames, we tend to break below a low more often than not before rallying to the upside versus on the lower time frames where that happens uh, less frequently. And part of the reason for that is because people... Uh, read the narratives they hear the narratives in these ticker feeds on various platforms and on broker platforms so when it breaks below they hear these news that uh, they hear such news such as eurocad at eight year low so people start selling when it gets below because apparently this is now resistance now that it's broken below and in the majority of cases we just see price rally to the upside the other thing that stands out to me which is why i have a ray line here is that we have what we call a near miss. Those of us who trade the Falcon strategy call this a near miss. So when we get close to another sharp hook point or any higher time frame liquidity, but uh, liquidity point, but particularly a sharp one like that, we get close to it, but don't quite tag it. It's a good indication that we're going to come back up to fill this area, which was not previously filled last time. Okay. What we also typically see halfway within a range, so within a within a range, I mean from here to here, is we tend to see these larger corrections, okay? So the market tends to move in, in the form of an impulse correction continuation. That's the natural ebb and flow of the market. And if we just measure this, this is one of the things we do, if we measure the impulse from the bottom, from the start of the impulse to the top of the correction, and we assume which is often the case that the continuation leg out of a correction is of a similar length to the preceding impulse. That would also take us up to this area as well, okay? So the market is just building volume at the moment for the next leg to the upside. Well, that's the picture um, as I see it. Of course, think things can change in trading quite quickly. Evidence of what I was just talking about with near misses, you can see here in the form of the fact that we had the move down, push up, price comes down, it gets close to this area but doesn't quite tap into it, giving me a clue that there's potentially still orders in this area and orders being placed in this area, which are likely to drag price back down to this area if we get a push to the upside, and that's exactly what happens. We come uh, crashing back down again. What happens? A higher time frame liquidity point. We don't just tap into that area. We break below it, wash out all the orders, shake everybody out, and then we push to the upside, and you can see that by way of this uh, low test candle there. So we've had a higher time frame confirmation on the weekly chart. We then get exactly what I was forecasting uh, last week, what I was saying I thought was likely to happen. We break below. People think now, that they hear the news come out, they think it's broken below, it's just going to keep going. And what happens? It shakes everybody out, gets people caught the wrong side of the market, and then boom, we rally to the upside. 
So we see these patterns repeat themselves over and over again. And I was looking for, if you remember, I was looking for that impulse correction continuation. You can see that we did get that there here. We did get that. Uh, but one of the reasons, one of the reasons I stayed out is because a four hour candle, look at, look at this bearish four hour candle. Now, one of the things that I've noticed from my documentation is that a lot of my losses when I've taken losses. So just to tap, uh, touch on it quickly, we tapped into the area by way of a reversal structure. So we have this one, two, three, that is a reversal structure. And we also have an internal one, two, three. And, and we also stall at this trend line. We move, we trickle down here. You'll see this as a drop down very correctively. So this is what we call, a, a, you know, we're always analyzing the nature of price. So when price gets to an area of value correctively, the next, uh, move is usually an impulse in the other direction. So we got that as well. One of the reasons I stayed out on Friday is because we had this bearish four hour candle, as I've just said, from my documentation, I've noticed that a lot of my losses have come when there has been either very bullish or very bearish momentum on the four hour chart just prior to me getting in. So uh, if I'm looking to get long, there has been very, very bearish momentum on the four hour chart and no real stall in price. So that's one of the, um, reasons I stayed out. You could see we were just filling this wick. I was aware of that. That was a positive. We were just filling this wick before a potential move to the upside. Uh, but one of the the other reasons I stayed out is because, because of this. Okay. So when we get a little one, two, three, like a kind of ascending one, two, three touch structure, give me a clue that these three drives have potentially completed. What we see in the majority of times is something like this, right? Something more in the region, maybe not that wide, but something more like that. So when I see an ascending three touch structure, it's not normally the case that we just get something like this. If I just demonstrate what I'm talking about, it's not normally the case that we just get something like that. And then it just does that. Okay. So that was one of the reasons I stayed out. Okay. Uh, and I and I actually I what my documentation has shown me. I remember I've taken in the past on the flip side, lots of entries like this, where I, prices come back up and I've just got short there, only to be tagged out. And it's done that thing that I was talking about. It's done something more like that, something a bit more developed. That's what we call a more developed structure. I say maybe not with the same level, uh, same width. So I stayed out of that one. You can see we got to this area. We did kind of take out that wick, take out the lows and push to the upside. But, you know, when we're trading, we're always looking at, you know, what's the most probable. And in my experience, according to the four years experience and the four years documentation that I've got, typically speaking, when we have an ascending three touch structure, we will form something more developed before pr pushing to the upside. So I was just protecting my capital. And if it played out, I was well aware that it could play out. Uh, and if it had, then, you know, so be it. I'm not bothered. But what I would have done if I had got on long here, so I would have waited because this is a one hour structure. I would have waited for this one hour close and then I was, would have dropped down to the 15 minute chart looking for entries. So once the body of the candle closed in that area and potentially I would have got in after this candle here. Okay, I would have waited until we'd closed back above this structure and got in here. And you can see that we would have been running at a nice little profit. But anyway, what am I looking for today? I'm looking for, we've now, if we just look at this, we have broken out of this structure. And what do we, how, we always ask ourselves, how did we break out of the structure? We broke out of the structure impulsively. And now you can see that we're forming continuation for potentially that, um, we're for, forming a Forming a, forming a correction for that potential further impulse to the upside, okay? So I just drill down. I'm just trying to make sense of this structure a little bit. And you can see I've kind of, if I go on the five-minute chart, uh, just to touch on it, you can see that this is kind of, this correction here is kind of one piece of its own, okay? We've corrected here. We've pushed up. We've kind of retested the back end of that. So I don't see this as part of all of this. However, in this instance, you can see that this this one here seems to be almost a bit, a bit more part of this, whereas this one seems to be a separate part of its own. So with that being said, and what I've just talked about a moment ago, we have a little inflection point there. Often when we push up and we do so correctively from an area like that, this 
a sharp move like that tends to be the first touch in a one, two, three, which lines up with the area of value, okay? So with that being said, what I'm going to be looking for today and just looking at the proportions as well, just taking into, I'm always taking into uh, consideration the proportions of the preceding impulse. That's easy for me to say, a bit of a tongue twister at this time in the morning. But what I'll be looking for today is if we get that one, if if this becomes uh, this becomes the first inflection point, and we get that one, two, three, where we tap into that area, because there is a little sharp hook point just underneath it, and because it also happens to be kind of the um, break of this trend line, which we could retest, I'm not going to be looking to call the bottom here. I'm going to be looking for price to tap into this area, push up, and then flag, and then I would look to get long either on the break of a flag such as this or within it. And you can see that I would be able to manage this trade up to this area here, just in case we came back down for whatever reason, perhaps took out this low afterwards. I'll be able to manage it up to this high for something in the region of 3%. So that is what I'm going to be looking for on EuroCAD. And then you can see on the, the, the one hour chart, this would be a healthy correction for that next leg higher, potentially. Okay, so that's what I'm going to be looking for today. I'm going to leave the forecast on the... Um, on the chart and of course if that was to happen it would be ready if you look at the time at the bottom of the screen at about 1 p.m which is the sort of time when i would expect a pair like eurocad to do uh, to go with the canadian dollar it is a bank holiday in canada today i am factoring that in but that is the sort of time that i would expect uh, the canadian dollar to go at the start or around about the start of the new york session so that is eurocad that's what i'm going to be looking for today if that does not shape up no trade for me so Aussie CAD, right? Why am I looking at Aussie CAD now? This is this is a prime example of what I've just talked about on Euro uh, Euro CAD. So if I just drill out, you can see that on the higher time frames on the daily chart, let's go out to the weekly. On the weekly chart, I'm looking at this because we have tapped into this very high area of liquidity. And by very high area of liquidity, I mean that. This is the last place that I can see. There's nothing below here until all the way down here. Okay, so I see no. Re so a lot of people will be paying attention to this. A lot of people who caught this move out down will be uh, taking profit in that area. And then you can see what have I talked about before? We tap into that area. We come all the way down. We do so very correctively, which gives me a clue that this is a potential impulse correction continuation, which would give us potentially. A one, two, three up here, okay, but that's um, that's a long way in the distance. What I do like about this is that we have this. I've talked about this before. Is that this sharp area of liquidity also happens to be the base of a piece of structure? So this one, two, three, and I've noticed from uh, my documentation and from pattern separating. This is what we call pattern separation. I've noticed from my documentation and from pattern separating that when a liquidity point which is a sharp one as well i've just talked about that a moment ago moment ago when it happens to be the base of a piece of structure as well i actually put this in my documentation my advanced self review at the weekend uh, i put in there to pay more attention to areas of liquidity uh, which happen to be the start of a piece of structure because when they do these tend to rally more aggressively or well, that's certainly what i've noticed okay so what happens we tap into the area we break below what have i said on the higher time frames we tend to break below these higher time frame liquidity points before rallying to the upside we do just that and then we blast to the upside by way of a high test candle an even better one than on eurocad so you can see that on the on the daily chart we have the same thing again a one, two, three touch structure. Okay. So this reversal structure there, we move down there by way of a one, two, three. We have a near miss. This is pretty textbook stuff. See the way that we trade is very, very simple. We have a near miss to here, giving me a clue that we're potentially, we had a near miss to here, to this area here. So we got close, didn't quite tap into that area, moved up very correctively, pushed down, washed out all the orders. This is what I call the FOMO leg. And then we push up. We have a near miss to here, which will likely get filled. So price would likely form an impulse correction continu continuation to take out this high and then complete this, uh, take out this high as well, take out this near miss and then take out that high. So on the higher time frames, you can see that we've got a bearish momentum coming in there. And 
if I just, what did I just say a moment ago? A moment ago, I said that when we get, when we get these kind of structures that start from a base like that and they just, you get that, usually it's the case that you will get something like this price taps into it. We then have a bit more depth before price pushes to the upside. So this is not typical. I will not be looking for just a push down and a push back up. Although it did play out on Friday with EuroCAD, what I'll be looking for, for the reasons expressed a second ago and on EuroCAD, is I'll be looking for something more in the region of this, okay? So it is nearly 6 a.m. in the UK as I speak. And if we got something more in the region of this, then I would have we would have a one, two, three. We would have more depth, okay? This may happen, um, this may not happen until... Perhaps if you look at the time, this might be ready. Let's say perhaps this is obviously the Australian dollar against the Canadian dollar. This may not happen until the start of the Asian session. But what I'll be looking for from this pair is a push up, a push down. Then we would have more depth. And if price tapped into this area on this instance, in this instance, I would take a risk entry because there's not actually anything below here. There's no inflection points or consolidation areas which price could tap into first meaning that I'd be le less likely to be tagged in, tagged out, and then pr price pushes to the upside versus if there was a little consolidation here. And also, just to touch on it, this area also happens to be the, the back end of this. Okay, so that it, 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 it would likely push it up, push down, tap into this, also tap into the liquidity that's here, and then go long. So that's what I'm going to be looking for, a risk entry here, but I want to see more depth first. So with three minutes to go, so I've got an alert set here just to see if we can push up to get that depth and if we do then i'll set another alert down here to see if we push back down okay so last up and with three minutes to go uh dollar cad so dollar cad on the higher time frames one of the reasons this is last on list you can see that we did tap into this area here we tapped into this area filled this wick pushed down and then we have that one two three we came up to fill this wick, but near missed this area here. Then we push up, break the highs, stop everybody out. Then we push down aggressively. We've now formed continuation below this low. That's a tick in the box. This sequence isn't the best, though. We don't tend to see such massive flags uh, before we're pushing to the downside like this. However, it can happen sometimes. So that's partly why this is last on the list. We also have a near miss. I've talked about those. We have a near miss to this low, which will likely be filled. And this just looks to me like we're forming, um, we, we form this expanding pattern now where we have higher highs within the structure, lower lows, and we have a near miss to this area. We then come back up, take out all the orders, and then push down. I'm slightly mindful of the fact that on the weekly chart, we have a bullish wick. So we have a green wick above a green body. So a lot of the time, these can be filled before pushing lower. We also have a bullish wick on the daily chart. So these are a couple of kind of negative confluence factors. However, on the four hour chart, you can see that we've completely washed above. We've got this evening style formation and then we've pushed down aggressively. OK, we even got to this area by way of a one, two, three. OK, I haven't put the trend lines on just for simplistic reasons. You can see that we've retested the back end of this structure and then pushed down. So what I'll be looking for today, this just looks a bit undeveloped at the moment, okay? So we have the impulse correction potential continuation, but it just looks a little bit undeveloped to me at the moment, especially if we look at this on the uh, uh, on the 15-minute chart. You can see this is a separate correction to this. So what I'll be looking for uh, is I'll be looking for price to push up. I've just moved this forecast over. If price pushes up, then we would have a confirmed second bottom and I would set an entry on the break and I would simultaneously be looking for price to push up to take out this sharp hook point here. And if we did, we tapped into that and then rejected, then I would cancel the original order and then place the risk entry or market order there and I would be able to manage this down to these lows uh, for something in the region of uh, 3% if we got the reduced risk entry. I'm not worried about this consolidation above because uh, in terms of proportions, it is too far above here. It is more than 50% of the uh, of this correction away. If we were to measure from there to there, the top of this is more than 50% of the way, uh, 
away. So that's what I'm going to be looking for today, folks. I'm about to be cut off. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I'll see you again in tomorrow's video. Thanks very much for watching.